Lord, we thank you. We love you and we give you praise. Thank you for all that you are and thank you for all that you do. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your spirit, the guiding light of our lives. We thank you for life. Thank you for the experience. Thank you for health and strength. Thank you for keeping us in our right mind. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for our families. Thank you. God, here it is, another Monday night. You've allowed us to assemble ourselves together to share your word tonight. Speak to our hearts. And we'll be careful to give you the praise. We ask now that you look on the sick and afflicted everywhere. You know them by name. You know where they are. You know what they need. You know who they need. In Jesus' name. We pray for, for all of those who have lost loved ones. We pray now that you restore their joy. And do it as only you can. In the name of Jesus. We thank you and we love you. And we pray and everybody said amen. Come on, give God a praise, will you? God is good. Okay, we got a few more minutes and then we're going to go down from this place. For those of you who have been MIA, I want you to know that we've taken just a little turn. We've been talking about the kingdom of God. And two weeks ago, a week or so ago, we changed the conversation. I think it is necessary for us to talk about this opposing kingdom. which is not the kingdom of God. That's right. That's right. It is the kingdom of Satan. That's right. Kingdom of Satan. So we've been talking about the kingdom of Satan. And the last time yes, I was here, Mama said, well, you need to stay there a while. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stay there. Yes, sir. So I guess we'll have a few more conversations along these lines. We'll talk about the kingdom of Satan. Now, this is the first thing I want to say about this tonight. The kingdom of Satan is something that all of us have to be delivered from. That's right, that's right, that's right. All of us. Are y'all listening? The kingdom of Satan is something that all of us have to be delivered from. Now, for mama, for many of us, we've been in church for a long time, and a lot of people just don't believe that they could be in king in Satan's kingdom. That's right. You can be there. You can be there in any church. Ooh, mama, dad, go. Don't you know you can be in church uh -huh. claiming to be saved, right. sanctified, That's filled right. with the Holy Ghost, right. claiming to know the truth, 
claiming to be teaching and preaching the truth and all the time you're an agent for the kingdom of Satan. That's right. That's right. So some people are part of the kingdom of Satan and don't know it. My God. My God. And I guess that's what's going to make this conversation relevant tonight because last time we talked about this, I told you, we don't talk about Satan because we're scared of him. No, no, no. He has not that kind of power. That's right, to be scared of him. No. Yes, Lord, let him be scared of you. Yeah, he has God. not God. that kind of power. That's right. The only power he has is the power you give. That's right, that you give. That's right. Only power he has is the power you give. That's right. Other than that, he has no power. That's right. No power. That's right. So we don't bring him up because we're scared of him. We talk about him because we want people to be aware. That's right, of him. And know how to resist him. <laughs> yes. There you go, Mama. Mama says it's easy to get rid of him. That's right. That's right. Mama said it's easy to get rid of the Satan. So all you got to do is resist it. That's right. And the Bible says he'll flee. Go try to get some more power. You see, that's how much power he has. That's right. That's right. He only has the power to influence. That's right. He only has the power to suggest. Yes. My God. But you have to uh -huh. grant him access to that's your right. soul. That's right. That's right. But mama said if you resist him. Yeah, he'll flee. Go get some more power. Go get some power. He'll flee from you. So, I wanted to drive that home tonight that a lot of people don't even understand. Uh -huh. You've been in church for years, but you've not yet realized that you're an agent. My God, my God, my God. You, my God. You talking about a Jesus uh -huh. Uh -huh. that he gave you. You see, Mama, this is what I realized about the Satan. Mm -hmm. Talk about him. Talk about him. Satan don't mind you talking about Jesus. No. That's right. You just got to talk about the one he taught you about. That's <laughs> All right. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Remember? My Somebody God. still ain't got it. Remember. My God. My God. See, because you still... Looking for Satan to be uh -huh. mean looking. No, no. You got to smile at the world. You, you looking for Satan mm -hmm. to be evil looking. No. But if no. you've been studying your Bible, you would realize that Satan is not that obvious. No, no, no. And that if he's going to con you, yeah. if he's going to manipulate you, he cannot be obvious. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's why somewhere in the script it says he transforms oh. himself. Yes. Yes. Into not an angel of darkness. No. Light. That's right. That's right. He transformed himself into an angel of light. That's what it said. That's what I read. But even though he transforms mama yes, himself into an angel of light, yes, you still can yes, sir. Yes, sir. tell him apart. All right. Somebody say, how, Pastor Tim? My God. Because he's a liar. Oh, and a big liar. Okay, here we come. I'm almost through. No, you not. No, you not. And even though he looks right. Yes. yes. You're still going to be able to catch him because he can't stand truth. All right. Woo! That's right. My God. He is a liar. Yes, well, somebody put it in the thread so yes. somebody can see what I'm saying. Yes. Satan is a liar. And Jesus said he is the father of all liars. That's, yes. Woo, that's what he said. 
our life. You see, yes, we call God our father. But that's right. But you cannot call God your father and you hate truth. Because God is truth. And his word is truth. So you cannot love God and hate truth. You cannot love God and love lies. And confusion. You cannot love God and you can't confront lies. Satan is a liar. And last time I checked the record, he was handling the Bible. Yes, sir. The Holy Bible. Y'all ought to come on and help me out of here. I'm almost out of here. I'm almost through. I said, last time I checked the record, Satan was handling the Bible. And Pastor Pummelie, if Satan is handling the Bible, he's not going to tell you the truth of the Bible. Last week, I think it was Corinthians. The preacher was saying that we don't alter the word. We, we let it be. Those who tend to deceive, they use the word to make it say what they wanted to say or what they thought it said. There's a lot of people in the world of Christendom today. They took the Bible, got it open, preaching from it, talking loud, but ain't saying nothing. <laughs> but I want you to know, I want you to know, I want you to know, and I want to say this for all of the Bible critics, especially this young generation. If you talk to young people about the Bible, yes, yes, you know, yes. the Bible is a fluke. It ain't real. That's what they say. White man wrote it. Yeah. Or whoever else. Yeah. Yeah, they said it. But I want you to know uh -huh. there is nothing wrong with the Bible. No. It's something wrong with our understanding of that book. So this is what I want to say to all my young brothers and sisters who don't like church no more and who really don't trust the Bible. Do not judge the word of God because of grandmama's ignorance. She did the best that she could. Paul Paul did the best that he could. Your old pastor, he did the best that he could to teach you the little that he knew. Yes, if the church won't admit it, let me admit it for them. There's a lot of things that the church has been ignorant to. And every time somebody try to raise the issue about the falsehood we believe, somehow in some way we always find a way to silence those people. And we tell everybody they the devil, they the false teacher, they are heretics. But the time has come. Somebody ought to help me tonight. Well, somebody put it in the thread. The time has come. We've been playing church a long time, but the time has come. You've been reading the Bible for a long time, but the time has come. I've 
decided that I'm going if I have to go. By myself. There was nothing wrong with the Bible. It's something wrong with the preacher's understanding of that book. And I think it's time for the church to confront our understanding. The Bible is a powerful book. It's a Bible that has the power to transform any life. But if it's going to have transformation power, it must be understood. Somebody holler properly. understand it, it'll build you up. what I'm saying. I think it was Peter, 1 Peter 3.15. Peter said that people that don't understand the Bible, they twist them. Yeah, Peter 3.15. 1 Peter 3.15. I think that's where it's at. But I want to get to the part where Peter says that the people that don't understand the scriptures, he says they twist them. He says because Paul said a lot of stuff that was hard to be understood. So that means whatever Paul wrote, you just can't read it for face value. Because a lot of stuff that he wrote, he wrote, so it's not 1 Peter, it's 2 Peter. I'm sorry. We've not been there in a long time, y'all. I want to show you that this book can destroy you if used improperly. How y'all think black folk got this ignorant? Y'all, y'all, I just lost y'all. I just lost y'all. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You see, how can we as a people be so strong in church, but so weak in the community and in the world? You got Jesus, but you ain't got no money. Y'all got to talk to me, man. Y'all... Y'all, I'm, I, did I lose y'all? I said you got Jesus, but you barely paying your bills. And can I tell you something? God's got a record with the righteous. Well, somebody put it in the thread so somebody can see what I'm saying. God has a record with the righteous. That anybody that was righteous had something to show for. My God, my God. Come here, David. My God. David says, I was young my God, my God. and now I'm a little older. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He says, but since I've been living, there's something I ain't never seen. God. What have you never seen, David? He says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed. David says God's record with the righteous is that the righteous don't beg. Not only do not the righteous beg, but they kids don't beg. I'm 
I'm just trying to show you how this book can destroy you because, see, we can claim to have all of this. But ain't got nothing to show for. And you talk about the drunk people. Yeah. They really got, they show you how drunk they, they don't stay at the doctor's office. You do. <laughs> Y'all that don't do nothing but sit around and eat and chew all day. The crackhead ain't at the doctor's office. You are. something to show for. That's right. That's right. Now that's the truth. The church stay there. They can't breathe. <laughs> they can't go to sleep. Verse number 16, 2 Peter 3, 16. I just want to show you how this Bible can destroy you too. I want, I want to show you that. Not only will it build you up if you understand it properly, but if you use it improperly, it will destroy you. So watch this. If Satan wants to destroy you, it's easy. All he got to do is give you this book. without the proper understanding. If he give you this book without the proper understanding, you will then destroy yourself. How y'all think we as a people got this divided? I mean, we've been suffering all our lives, but we're, we're, we're divided more now than we've ever been. We're divided by denominations. We, we're ignoring how hard times have been for us. We're separated by this book. This book has made people become self-righteous. You pass by your brother every day and refuse to speak. Talk to me, somebody. You know he needs help. He, you know he needs you. But this book got your head in the air. That's right, Darlene. Ain't nobody saved but your church. Ain't nobody going to heaven but your denomination. Let's read 2 Peter 3 16. Listen, as also in all his epistles. So, Paul didn't write the Bible. Rather, he wrote epistles. You know what an epistle is? An epistle is a letter. So whenever Paul wanted to say something to the church, he'd write them a letter. That's right. So Paul wasn't writing scriptures when he wrote letters. That's right. That's right. That's right. Are y'all listening? When he wrote a letter... He wasn't writing scriptures. He only wrote letters. Now the scriptures was in the letter. And the scriptures was in the letter because Paul knew the scriptures. Watch this. Speaking in them of these things. So these things was in his letter. <laughs> yes. 
in which are some things hard to be understood. That's what this, my Bible says. <laughs> Paul wrote a lot of stuff. Yes. And notice the Christian church, we got most of our doctrine from Paul. That's right. That's right. That's right. But nobody ever told us that most of the stuff that he wrote about was hard. I understand. That's right, that's right, Pastor. Watch this. Which they that are unlearned. So if you are unlearned, you better put Paul's letters down. If you are ignorant of the scriptures, Leave Paul's work alone. Because it's dangerous. If you are unlearned and unstable, rest. They watch this. They they twist the scriptures, they mess it up. As they do also the other scriptures. So the writer says not only do they mess up Paul's letter. <laughs> Since they are unlearned, they mess up the other scriptures. Watch this. This is the part I wanted to get to. Because when you are unlearned. And you use the Bible improperly, you will do this to your own destruction. So, not only will the Bible build you if you mishandle this. You're going to do it to your own destruction. I think y'all got it. So, I guess I said all of this to say, nobody told us that Satan was preaching. Nobody told us that Satan was a bishop. Nobody ever told us that Satan was a pastor. Nobody ever told us that t Satan called himself real. <laughs> Nobody ever told us that Satan called himself prophet. No. That's right. <laughs> because we've been looking for him <laughs> to look evil. Somewhere in Revelations, Pastor Pamelie, it said Satan fell down here and managed to deceive the whole world. Yeah. That's what it said. The whole you can't do that looking evil. No. <laughs> no, you got to have a pleasant look on you. <laughs> yes, Lord. Are y'all ready? Satan, I told you last week, he is the God of this world. That's right. We ready. We ready, Pastor. We ready. We are under his rule. That's right. Yes, we see. Oh, diamond. We got the diamond road cloak. We take all of this by. This <laughs> So if Satan been preaching, teaching, uh -huh. prophesying, then the first thing we ought to do is say, okay, okay. okay. first of all, I need to read my Bible before the pastor tell me to turn my Bible to a certain chapter. Because yeah. see, some people don't read their Bible until the preacher said turn tomorrow. Ooh. 
You don't read your Bible no time of the week. You only pick it up on Sunday and the preacher telling you to turn to the book of Ephesians. That's right. And you don't know nothing about Ephesians. You... <laughs> nothing about it. On your phone all day. You see, That's right. when the preachers, Pastor Pamela, there's a church in the Bible in the New Testament called the church at Berea. Yeah. See, if you went to church at the church at Berea, that was a Bible church. Okay. And the church at Berea didn't expect the preacher to just know the scriptures. All right. The church at Berea knew the scriptures. All right. That's why whenever the preacher would come to Berea and talk to them about the scriptures, the church at Berea would, would, would go back to the scriptures to make sure that whatever the preacher told them was the scriptures. But today, that burden ain't on, on, ain't on nobody but the preacher. That's right. That's right. Ain't nobody got to know the Bible now but the bishop. All right. Yeah. It's just messed up, y'all. It's messed up. This is his word. I said, this is his work. This is his work. That's right. And can I tell you something? God. Your God ain't got no problem with that. My God. No problem. No problem. Somebody help me. All right. We're going to help you. We're going to help you. I said, God ain't got no problem with that. Yes, yes. Matter of fact, somewhere in the scriptures, God had allotted him some time. And that he was going to be let loose in the earth. He was going to be unhinged and unchained. God knows he's ruling. You just don't know. God is not ignorant to Satan's government. You are. Yes, sir. God is well aware of what Satan has done. He's aware of what Satan is doing. You tell your neighbor, say, God can tell time. I wonder, can you? See, because there's, God is only coming when it's time. But notice, mama, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. when God comes, uh -huh. Lord Jesus. he's coming to judge this world. That's what he said. That's what he said. That's oh, y'all listen. A lot, lot of y'all, lot of y'all talking about y'all waiting on God to get back. And every knee gonna bow and every tongue gonna confess that he is Lord. Well, when God returns, he's not coming to do a revival. He's not coming so you can worship him. And I can see a bunch of y'all now trying to worship God since you saw him. But he's going to tell you, get up. This ain't the time to worship. It's time for judgment. I'm going to judge every man according to his works. What do, your, what do your works look like? Are you claiming to love a God you ain't never seen but hating your brother you see every day? What do your works look like? Are you sending God to the nursing home while you sit on your recliner and do nothing? When God don't go to the nursing home to visit the sick, you go to the nursing home to visit the sick. That's the word. That's the word. 
Lord, go to the jailhouse. Jesus says on that day, So I'm going to say, Lord, when were you sick and we didn't know it? <laughs> Jesus says, you, he's going to say, when I was sick, you didn't visit me. When I was naked, you wouldn't even let me borrow a coat. And those that think they got it is going to say, when were you naked? And I didn't know when were you hungry? And I didn't know. Jesus says it's simple. He says what you have done to the least of them. You have done also unto me. So that means you got to watch how you treat people. He says because what you have done to the least. You also. What do your works look like? Are you speaking in tongue but ain't speaking to your fellow man? What's your works look like? God ain't got a problem with Satan ruling. God is not ignorant to Satan's rule. You are. See, God already has a schedule. And Satan knows the schedule. That's why he got to do all that he possibly can do because he knows that the time is going to come. I told you last week when Jesus met that man in the graveyard, the demons in him spoke and said, what you doing here? They said, have you come to torment us? They told Jesus, it ain't your time yet. I preached Sunday down in West Point, Matthew 16. Uh -huh. The Pharisees and the Sadducees came to confront Jesus because Jesus was bad for church business. Oh, A lot of folk really don't know why Jesus was murdered and killed. He was killed because he was bad for business. Y'all got to help me here. Jesus died because he was bad for business. You see, it's bad for business if you're going around opening people's eyes. And the church get rich off of them being closed. If you're going around opening your eyes, you are bad for business. Jesus was going around raising the dead. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. When Satan, if he's going to get the best out of you, you got to be dead. That's right. Oh, yeah. Not literally dead. Because everybody that's dead is not in a graveyard. I'm preaching, but you barely talking back to me. I say everybody that's dead is not in a casket. Some folk are dead and they got Louis Vuitton on. Y'all ain't said nothing. Some folk are dead and they wear red bottom. Some folk are dead. <laughs> Driving a Rolls Royce. But I, Riri, I brought that up because... 
The Sadducees and the Pharisees came to Jesus uh -huh. and said to him, if you are really who we think you are, then show us a sign. That's what they said. They love and did. Jesus told them, you are hypocritical because I know y'all. He says, y'all are smart. Y'all yeah. <laughs> can look at the color of the sky and predict the weather. How can you look at the sky and look at the coloration of the sky and then predict the weather? That's right. How can you predict the weather but you can't tell time? That's what Jesus said. Jesus says y'all can recognize the weather but y'all can't discern the signs of the time. See, you got to know what time it is. And if you know what time it is, you should know what's coming. Why well, wish I had some help in here? Jesus told you when the world would end, what signs you should look for. And I don't know if you've been looking, but we've been seeing a few of these signs. Mothers against daughters and fathers against sons. Men becoming lovers of themselves. Ask somebody, can you tell time? Because if you know the time, then you should know what must be done and what will eventually be done. And I'm going when I tell you this. God is coming when he's, when he's ready to do the benediction on this world. He, he allows Satan to talk, preach, run everything, run the service, run the world. But the benediction belongs to God. Ain't nobody dismiss this world order until God comes. So that's why Jesus came. Matter of fact, Paul said Jesus was before his time. Jesus came to put an end to a world's way of thinking and living. Yeah. He came to put an end to that. That's why every time you heard Jesus preach, he was talking about the kingdom of heaven. And every time you heard him and John preaching, they wasn't telling you that God was coming. They was telling you God is here. But they was telling people, you can't get into this until you repent. Change your mind. In order to get in God's kingdom, you have to be delivered from the kingdom of this world. First John 5, 19. Please, Michael, we get it. I got one more scripture I want to give you, and then I'm going tonight. I want to say something else. First John 5, 19. Read it. This is the scripture I want you to see. I, I just want you to see that this world belongs to God. Yeah. I told you last week, it's a challenge. Yeah. Knowing God and living in this world. 
Because if you know God and live in this world, you're going to stick out like a sultan. Now, no, it don't look like it, but everybody claiming God don't know a bit about it. I've already admitted my ignorance. I've traveled the world singing and preaching about Jesus and God, and I will blind. But one day I had a Christophany. One day I had a theophany. That means I ran right smack dab into God. My God, my God. And Mama Wells, when I ran into him, I didn't see nobody else. My God. When I met God, I saw myself. Oh. When I met God, I got in touch with myself. When I got, when I met God, Pastor Pamelia, I start leaving folk business alone, and I start minding my own business because when I saw God, I saw how far I was away from Him. And if Isaiah was here tonight, he'd testify with me. When I met God, I saw Him high and lifted up. Are y'all listening? He says, Isaiah said, when I saw God, when I met him, I saw myself. And when I saw myself, Isaiah said, I said, woe with me. That's what he <laughs> I, I, I've been looking at everybody else. I, I've been judging everybody else. But whoa, it's me. No, I ain't in nobody's business. Uh uh. That's why I want you to stay out of mind. I ain't in nobody's business. Whoa! It's me. And please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. All right, all right. Ooh, this is a good message. This is a good message. I just wanted you to see that this world belongs to the wicked one. That's right, to the wicked one. And we got to know how to treat it. Yes, sir. Now, my last oh, Lord. script for tonight, and then we'll come back. Thank y'all. Y'all having a wonderful crowd. My God. And you got a good preacher. Woo, 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 woo. My God. Marguerite, I want to get Matthew 12. And 26. Ooh, 12 and 26. 12 and 26. 12 and 26 of Matthew. Ooh, what a lesson. Matter of fact, get, get Matthew 12 and 22 and let's read on down and we go down from this place. All right, let's do it. God bless y'all. God bless you. Can y'all read that for me? One possessed with the devil. Blind and dumb. <laughs> Sound like a bunch of church folk, don't it? Full of the devil. Full of the devil. Blind and dumb. Right. <laughs> full of devil, full of devil. <laughs> and he healed him. That's what he said. Yeah. But notice what the root of his problem was. Uh -huh. The devil. The devil. My son, David. He was possessed. That's right. Means he had been taken over. That's right, by demon. Mm -hmm. And so much that what? <laughs> <laughs> Let's read 23. Now watch this. 
You only getting this because Jesus is the new kid on the block. The time has come. To confront ignorance yes, Lord. and evil. That's right. This time is front. Watch this. When Jesus healed those who had those issues, uh -huh. they asked, uh -huh. Is not this the son of David? Verse number 24. Come on. Wait a minute. Now wait a minute. Talk about it. Talk about it, Pastor. And Mama, you know I had to. <laughs> I had to get over a lot of things. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because you wonder how could people ignore your sacrifice? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How can they? See, Mama, it's a, it takes a sacrifice yes, Lord. to preach truth in a world of lies. Let me say it again. People will call you everything but a child of God. And at the same time, they ignore your sacrifice. My God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Ooh. Wait a minute. You know, because a lot of people say, well, you know, Pastor Tim, uh, you know, you know, they, they put me in the line with Carton Pearson, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> no, Pastor Tim, they, they changed the Bible. They doing this for money, and they do. You don't make no money telling the truth. You lose money telling the truth. You don't get opportunities telling and knowing the truth. You lose opportunities. Because when you know the truth, some folk just can't hang out with you. Some folk just can't do, they can't do it. I like your singing, but I can't use it. Bad for business. You got to make a decision to become bad for business. Yeah, see, you don't hate me because... I molest little children. All right. You don't hate me because I came out the closet and I say I love a man. Yeah. You don't hate me because I raped your daughter. You hate me because I'm bad for business. I wanted you to see this because you ain't really doing nothing for Jesus until the world treats you like they treated him. That's right. All right. Did I say that right? You ain't doing nothing for Jesus until the world start hating you like they hated him. I'm just trying to find out why liars in love with if we have to with okay I don't I don't know I just seen we we lost our yeah we lost that's, her I'm sorry y'all that's all right we'll get back there the Pharisees came these are the people that think they know God think they know the scripture they've been in church for a long time but Jesus is a new kid on the block and when the people started asking about Jesus the Pharisees immediately started to tear away at his reputation. Sure did. They started telling everybody. Sure did. 
He's not of God. He's got the devil in him. That's what it said. So when people say the devil is using me, uh -huh. you put me in the line with Jesus. My God, my God. Because that's the same thing liars said about him. Verse number 25, come on. I got to get these people away from here, Marguerite. Let's go. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. You know what Jesus is saying? Jesus is saying Satan's kingdom is not divided. No, Satan can't even. Why do you think his kingdom is yet standing? My God. Because Satan has practiced something that the church has not been practicing. My God, my God. Unity! Oh, come on, man. Fred. Satan is uniform. He's unified. The only somebody that's separated is the church, the people that's calling on God. That's the truth, pal. That is the truth. That is the truth. Come on, Jesus. Give them some of your good sense. Jesus says, I can't be Satan and cast out Satan. That's what he said. That's impossible. <laughs> oh, Lord, this is good. If I cast him out, that means I have something greater. If I cast Satan out, that means I have something greater. Because other than that, you cannot cast him out. So I can't be him and cast him out. That's right. How can you do that? I'm only casting him out because I know something greater. But notice what they was calling that in Jesus. They was calling that. Mm -hmm. That was great. Yeah. They was calling that the devil. devil. That's what he said here. Then Jesus had to give them good sense. No, Satan's kingdom is not divided. That's right. Satan, not Satan don't cast Satan out. No. That's, that's church folk. That's <laughs> right. Satan's house is not divided. They don't want to call it. Y'all put y'all hands together. I'm through the line. Oh, come on, y'all put y'all hands together for Jesus. What you want me to do tonight, Pastor Tim? This is what I want you to do. Why don't you sit down? Turn the TV off. Yeah. Turn it off. Give the phone a break. Yeah. Give it a rest. Yeah. Yeah. Turn it off. Be quiet. And ask God for a visit. That's right. Stop talking so much to him and just talk to you. There you go, Mom. Yeah. Meditate on his word. That's right. Google his word like you Googling everything else. That's right. You become strong. Oh, Lord Jesus. What a lesson. I'm through. I pray that somebody has heard something tonight that will make you check your own life. And become an agent of God yeah. to help turn this world into the right. kingdom of yeah. God. 
Mom, I'm through. You want to close us out? Do you have any thoughts or remarks you want to? You know, if we talk more about Satan, it would tame the world. Because we always talking about what God will do. But Satan has got us so bad tied up. Satan always got something, a block in the way. You got to find out, you got to know, is he Satan or is he God? Mm. Because people set a trap for you every day. That's right. That's right. That's right. And when you get to that, that trap, you ought to you ought to learn to talk to your family about Satan. A lot of accident came up through my family. I sat down and I said, now let me tell you. Satan gonna do this to you. But don't say it in here. Yes. You got to know his plan first. His tricks and schemes. That's right. Because if you don't know him, he'll have you acting a clown. <laughs> do y'all hear me say he has set a many trap for you but before when I read the Bible I always pray and sometimes when I get in the bed I don't say nothing I say I'm listening to and God will show you the trap they got set for you. He'll lead you. He'll lead you. If you connected with him, and it ain't coming through no, come out, look at that person. He going to come to you first. That's right. Come on now. Come on. You better get that Satan out of you too. <laughs> That's right. My yeah. Oh, he know how to get to you, mama. He know where it's at. Yeah, he know where it's at. If you push my button. Yes. I, I set up a lot of time. He pushing a lot of y'all buttons. He'll do it too. He know exactly where it is. And y'all going off. <laughs> you clowning like you don't even know God. Yeah. children, I said, be quiet and listen to him. You got to listen to Satan first. He'll start bringing you a whole lot of stuff. And if you don't watch him, you're going to become Satan yourself. That's right. Because you're going to say, child, what they said. <laughs> Slick, he could, he could. Like I tell my daughter when singing, I said, the men call me pretty, but don't you send them a dime. <laughs> <laughs> they telling that same woman the same thing. Ah! <laughs> you ain't that pretty. <laughs> so they running down the same old line, ma. Now you know that Satan. 
Satan need a couple dollars. Daniel. Ah. <laughs> but cheering, cheering watch and watch the eyes. Yeah. You can tell. You can. <laughs> you can tell them they bad. They bad eyes. It's the that. window. It's the window. It's the window. It's the window. But cheering, watch the window. Yes. Because the devil. Tell you, child, it ain't no harm. Have fun. Go on, I tell you. <laughs> on Broadway. Well, you're going to stay on the narrow way. <laughs> now, you know you want to go on the Broadway. Broadway. Yeah. But you say, child, you better live. <laughs> 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 yeah. I don't, I tell my children, they'll tell you I don't care if they get mad. I say I'm going to stay on one more. Hallelujah. The narrow way. Because you're going to have a wreck. Yes. <laughs> on Broadway. If you try to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Savior. That's right. And we all make some mistakes. But don't continue to do that. That's right. Recognize. You'll go around here hating your enemy. I don't like you, child, but you're in church shouting. <laughs> Speaking in tongues. <laughs> what kind of tongue you got? Yeah. Yeah. Pastor. You don't hear this too often. I'm talking about Satan Church. The time has come. And the sign. That's right. He's showing us the sign every day. The time has come. The time has come. It's a time. And watch the time. Watch the time, Mama. Watch the time. Children don't love their parents like they used to. Look at the time. Look at the time. When they get tired. <laughs> when they get tired. When, when the mama's sick, you know That's what? Right. You know what they'll say? Mama is tired. That means she couldn't leave. <laughs> so they can get their money. <laughs> get their inheritance. That's all they want. But won't even come sit with you. Mama is so tired. Watch them, they'll give you a pill. The curl take. You have to watch your own family. You gotta watch your own family, that's right. Mama ain't tired of living here. Did y'all hear what mama said? Mama said, I ain't tired of living here. <laughs> <laughs> Sometime, I'm going to set this bed up in the door. Sometime, you can look at some of your children. They ain't nothing but the devil. <laughs> <laughs> like you said. Isaiah said, it's me, oh Lord. It's me. Spend it in the meat of God. That's right. That's right. And that's why I tell my children, I, I trust a lot of my children and some of my children. <laughs> <laughs> Ma, I hope you trust me. Ah! I'm going to tell it like it is. 
Give me my pocketbook. <laughs> Y'all come on, give mama some love. Mama say, give me my pocketbook. Give it to me. Y'all, we going again. Can y'all put y'all hands together for Pastor Linda Pomelee and Pastor Daniel being here tonight. Next time y'all in town, next time y'all in town, we got to add two more chairs. To this golden table. I want y'all to sit up here with me and, That's right. and talk a little while. That's right. And I want you to I, know, I yes. want, <laughs> I want you to know my children been good to me. Hallelujah. Mom. I told Faye, I said, Faye, I said, on one side of my Matthew. <laughs> I saw the side of my magic look like I don't know the same thing. She, she getting me out. Him and her husband. They done been involved me. A brand new man. A brand new man. So, Ma, you about to get some good ribs. Y'all, Pastor Palmer Lee, all of my kids is doing well. Yeah, yeah. When you got, when you got a, a son-in-law, yeah, agree with the wife, yeah, about a mom. They go around in my house and see what I need. When I know anything, they all in the end. Come on now, come on, come on, now. come on. All of my kids do that. Yeah. All of them do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of them do it. Mr. Dennis just got it in the family a few months ago. If anything gets stopped up, call Mr. Dennis. Call. <laughs> Mr. D. And that's why I try <laughs> to treat them nice. Yeah. Because everybody ain't no devil. That's right. Come on, Ma. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. And yes. if you are, there's hope for you. That's right. You, you can be delivered from devilment. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And I appreciate all of my son-in-law. From, from Curtis. Yeah. Either. All of them. All, all of them. them. All of them. All of them. They don't mistreat me. Hallelujah. Mama, you're a favorite woman. Come on, let's give God some praise. Y'all, we're getting ready to go. Tonight, I want you, real quick, I want you to get something in your hand. We've been missing for a week or so. I want you to get something in your hand. Get something in your hand. Get something in your hand. I came to be a blessing tonight, too. It's Monday nights that I get a chance to be a blessing to Prince of Peace. So I came to be a blessing tonight, too. And those of you that are in the signal tonight, I want you to pick up that device and find a platform where you can be a blessing to this ministry and keep us coming and keep us doing and advancing uh, the work of the kingdom. So now let me pray for all of you who are getting ready to give and be a blessing tonight. Lord, we thank you and we give you praise. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. Your word is light and your word is life. We thank you. We pray that somebody has heard it tonight. Yes, Lord. And we pray that your word take root. Yeah. That this your people can produce much fruit. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you for every giver. Yes, we ask Lord. now that you bless everything that they touch. In Jesus' name, bless their minds, yes. bless their ideas, yes. bless their relationships, bless their homes. Yes. In Jesus' name. We thank you and we love you. We pray that no home go lacking. Hallelujah. From this opportunity to give. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we love you. Thank you so much. Those of you who are not giving electronically, you can mail your gift in. Marguerite is going to give you a few ways that you can give. And um, 
I want you to come through tonight and be a blessing yeah. to keep us coming. I'm going. Yes, uh, if all. God bless you, Mama. I, I love my family too. I love Prince of Peace. We're getting ready to go, y'all. Let's let's go. Let's do it. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. We're going. God bless you. I want to say peace and blessings to all of you who are coming on to the live after we go on. I want to greet you. I pray that the program is a blessing to you tonight and for all of you who are watching I want you to be a blessing whatever God lays upon your heart it would be greatly appreciated if you helped us in ministry and to keep advancing the move of God thank you so much you pray for me I'll pray for you go in peace I pray that this be one of the best weeks of your entire life. God bless you. Thank you so much. He did, and I sent him some money last night, too. Thank you. When you have your gift, y'all come on and drop it on the altar. Everybody with me.